Welcome back aliens, my name is Davin Vendi and let's continue with the series on JavaScript. So in the earlier videos we have talked about what is JavaScript and we have also done the setup, right? So in your machine you will be having VS Code and Node.js. So we need VS Code where you, where you will write a code where you also want to see the output and it will be helpful for debug as well. We will be using Node.js to run the code, right? We need some environment. So Node.js has a JavaScript engine using which you can run the code. So we'll talk more about that JavaScript engine later. As of now, we just want to get started with the code, right? See, uh, we have also done the hello world, but not on VS Code, I guess. So what we will do in this video is we'll start with the first and most important concept in any programming language, actually, which is variables. See, first of all, why do we need variables? If you think about this world, if you think about the information world or internet world, everything is about information, right? In fact, we also say this is an information age. So the most important thing in IT or the computers is information. So whatever we do, we do it for the information. You want to get the input, you want to show the output, you want to process data. It's all about data, right? Now the question arises where you will store data. Of course, use with the help of programming, you can process data. But even for processing, first you have to store your data somewhere. And after processing, you will store your data somewhere. So we need to store our data somewhere. And that somewhere is variables. Uh, yeah, the only th tricky point is, when you want to store your data for a temporary purpose, we will be using variables. If you want to store your data for a permanent use, we have a different options for it. Currently, we are focusing how do you store your data in a code. So we can do that with the help of variables. So example, let's say I have a data here. So let's say I want to perform some operations before doing that. So we'll add two numbers here first. So I also want to print them. So what I will do is I will say console.log. The same thing we've done for uh, hello world. Here, what we'll do is we'll say two plus two. Now, of course, if you run this code, you will get the output, right? So let's save this file as well. So we are doing in the same file, which we started, which is first.js, which is available on desktop. Okay, so let me just run this. Of course, you have two options of running this. We can write a node command or we have installed this extension called code runner. Let's use that. So when you click on run, you can see we got the output as four. Okay, this looks cool, right? But then I want to store this data somewhere so that I can use it. Example, where I want to use it. Again, I will do a calculation here. And here I want to add two numbers. One is a new value. Of course, let's say I want to add three, but I want to add this three with the previous operation. Maybe you have a choice. Let's say the previous operation is two plus two, and then you will say three. But don't you think you are doing the same thing again? Example, when you run this code, of course you will get four, you will get seven, four because of the first operation, seven because of the second operation. But don't you think we are doing it again? So basically, if this takes some time, even this will take some time. So what if you do this addition and you store it somewhere? So let's do that. What I will do here is, before console.log, I want to achieve this operation. I also want to store it somewhere. Now where to store it? So we have a concept of variables and variables has a name. So let's use a variable name. Uh, I will store this number in num. So let's say num equal to 2 plus 2. So whatever you add here, which is two plus two will be stored on this variable or inside this variable. So this looks cool, right? And then I can just use, instead of printing two plus two, I can print num here. So imagine this num as a box and inside that box, you have a value now, which is four. So this is an expression which will evaluate and the value, which is four will be stored inside num. And then when you print num, it will print the value of that box. So box is num and what you get out is the value, which is four. Okay, so now we can use the same four here, right? But before that, let me just run this to check if everything is running. So whenever you do small changes, make sure you run it to check what is happening. Uh, so let's run this code. Okay, at least we have not got the error. We got the same output because we have not changed the operation yet. The only change is this time you are fetching the value from a variable. So the first four which you got here is coming from this num. Okay, now I can actually reuse and that's the power, right? So once you have a data in the variable, you can use the same data multiple times. We are doing it here, we are doing it here and you can use it again. Not just for printing the value, you can also use it for addition, which we are doing here. You can do all the operations. The data will be there. 
okay how long that data will be there is it the right way of creating a variable i will talk about that as well but as of now it's running right see the most important thing is when you learn thing for the first time so first let's understand what it is and then we'll see how we can use it and then we'll understand what is happening behind the scene this is not a time to understand what is happening behind the scene right so let's go with the flow we have a variable imagine a box you have a value you're printing it here and you're adding it here but is it the right way of creating a variable see if you want to create a variable uh, in javascript you have an option of just by saying a variable name you can use it by chance if you're coming from other language let's say c c plus plus java or any language which needs you to declare variables that's right in some languages we have to declare them first here we're not doing that we are simply saying num but this is not a right way of defining a variable it is allowed here but then with every new version you get new features right so this was an old feature so if you want to get a variable say let so it's a let num equal to whatever value you want to assign so basically this let is a keyword using which you can create a variable there's other option as well uh, but we'll see that later. So we have let and then variable name value assignment. And you don't have to always create an operation or create an expression to assign the value. You can also directly assign the value if you want. So you can directly say if you have a value with you, you can directly assign. Okay, so this makes sense, right? You can actually assign a number. So this here is a number, right? What if you want to store something else? Maybe you want to store a name. So what I will do here is let me just remove this part and let me just go with a name here. So I will say let. So every time you create a variable, you have to say let. I will say let and here I will say name is equal to. Okay, now the problem is name is an inbuilt keyword. So let's use something else. Let's say, let's say user. And this is important. Make sure that you always name your variable properly. Maybe you can also use A, B, C. For a smaller code, it works. But then the moment you have lengthy code, it will be difficult to guess what you're trying to do. So don't use ABC, something like that. Always use proper names. Maybe you can also say username, right? So let's say in this username, I want to store my name. So the way you can do that is by saying, you can mention a name here. So my name is Naveen. So I will simply say, let username is equal to Naveen. And let's try to print this. I will come back here. I will say console.log and I will say username. What do you think? Will it work? It should, right? I mean, so everything is working as of now. So let's run this code and let's see what happens. And the moment you run this code, oh, this is your first error. Congratulations. This is something, if you're doing programming for the first time, this is something you'll be doing in your lifetime, right? So as a programmer, you write code and you face errors. Okay, uh, I don't want to scare you here, but we have a variable username and then we are trying to assign a name and we got an error. See what this error says. It says Naveen is not defined. That's where I'm defined here. Uh, see, the problem is, if you remember, we have talked about this. Whenever you write a code, that code has to be converted into a machine code because your computer understands only one language, which is machine language. So your engine, which we are talking about, will try to convert this code into machine code, right? So it will start in this way. So it will say, okay, let, let is what? It's a keyword, right? So it knows what that let means. Num, okay, it, it knows. Whenever you have a let keyword after that, when you have num, it's a variable name. So JavaScript knows about these things. Equal to is in, uh, inbuilt. Code is a number, right? So of course we have finite numbers. Uh, then we have console again, this is inbuilt. Log is inbuilt. So everything which you can see on the screen. So even this let is known to the JavaScript. This username is a variable name, so it will accept it. The moment you say Naveen, it got confused. It is confused, is it a variable name? Is it something which, which a user has defined? This, so there are so many things which is defined by the JavaScript and there are so many things which you can define. Example, num is my creation. Username is my creation. What about console log? It is already defined inside your, uh, inside your JavaScript engine. The moment you assign Naveen, it got confused. Is it a variable name? So we have to say, hey, don't treat this as a variable name. Treat is as a string something which I want to assign. Example four is well-defined, right? We have a finite number, but strings, it can be anything, right? It can be a lengthy name. Example, my full name, Tadi Pali Naveen Kumar Bapredi. Okay, I will not repeat that, but it can be anything. So when you want to assign a string, always use double quotes. So text string, it should be inside a double quote. Now you have an option, you can use double quote or you can use single quote, okay? It's your choice. JavaScript says you can use both and that's why JavaScript is a flexible language in that case. 
But yeah, if you are using a double quote at the start, don't use single quote at the end. Okay, so either use single quote or double quote uh, on both the side. And now it should run uh, because I'm expecting it should be giving an output now. So if I scroll down, you can see it worked. We got four and we got Naveen. So that's how you store a string or a text. Use single quote or double quote. Now, why we have two options? Example, let's say I want to store Naveen's phone or Naveen's account. So in that case, I will say, so let's say, I will not put any single quote or double quote as of now. Let's just write, write, write. I will say Naveen's phone or Naveen's account. So I want this to be treated as a text or a string, right? So what do you think? What should I do? Should I use single quote or double quote here? See, the problem is if I use single quote, we already have single quote inside a text, okay? Uh, so if I put single quote, there will be a confusion. This single quote means opening a string. This single quote was supposed to be printed as it is, Naveen's phone, right? Or Naveen's account. I don't want this to be treated as the string context or string thing. So what we can do is in this case, you can use double quotes because I just want to avoid that confusion. So we can use double quote. When do you use single quote now? Let's say you have double quote inside your text. We will be using single quote. Or in general, whenever you get a chance, use single quote. It makes much more sense. Okay, and there's one more thing. If you work with different languages, example C, C++, Java, they have double quotes. So if you, have, if you know multiple languages, you might have a tendency to write double quotes and that's that is completely fine okay so now we know how to work with two different types we we have used numbers we have used a string now likewise we have multiple type of data of course we'll talk, talk about that in the next video or uh, different type of data but we can create any variable and we can assign any type of values there now why they are called as variables is because we can change the value right so when you talk about variables what's something you can imagine variable means it can change in the same way if you have a num here, we can change the value of it. So let's say I don't want num to be 4 anymore. I want it to be 9. We can do that. So let's say I will print console. So let me print num and let's see what the output is. So if you run this code, uh, you can see we got 4 because of the first line or the first console. Then we got 9 because of this string or this, this thing. And then we got 9 because of the last code here. But the question arises: why we are not using let second time? It's because this time when you use num for the first time you are defining or you're declaring num you're declaring a variable second time you're just using it so you don't have to declare variable multiple times if you do that it will give you some bad words so i will say let num equal to nine and if you run this code okay and that's bad words so you can see uh, you can say it says identifier num has already been declared and this is very important okay if you're starting your programming journey you will be facing a lot of errors, as I mentioned before. That should be a part of your life. Write a code, get errors, solve them, which is very important. And the first step to solve an error is to read the error properly. I have seen people, okay, so in fact, when I started coding, I used to write a code, I used to get errors, and the moment you get errors, you directly jump to the code, see what, what is happening. Don't jump towards code, jump to the error message and see what is what's going wrong. So when you read the error, it will it will specifically mention identifier num has already been declared. Okay, so that means you have you're declaring multiple times. And that's what we're doing here. Very important. Now let's talk about how can you name your variable. As I mentioned before, your name should be logical. Okay, don't use A, B, and C. I might be using it somewhere because I'm just teaching you, but then when you write up code for a project or for assignment, never use a variable name which is not defining itself. Example, when I say num, it means something. When I say username, it means something. Okay, but then are there any rules? Example, I can still use A, right? But are there any rules that this is how your variable name should be? Let's say this is username. What if I put a dot here? Not allowed. You can see we got an error there. In fact, not just here. If I run this code, uh, it will give you error. The error it says unexpected token. So dot is not allowed here. It has a special meaning, which we'll talk about that later. So dot is not allowed. What about round bracket? Not allowed. So what is allowed? A variable name can have characters, which is there, numbers as well. Example, I will say username one. We can do that. Okay, numbers are allowed. And you can put numbers anywhere, not the first value. The first letter should not be a number. Okay, that will not work. In fact, you can also use some special symbol. One of them is underscore. 
okay this this is something you can do and there's one more you can also use dollar symbol so you can use dollar symbol and underscore those are the only special symbols allowed other than that you cannot use any other special symbol for the variable name and numbers are allowed but not as a first character there are certain standards you can follow to name your variable so whenever you have variable which has two words example if you look at this username here you can see there are two words right user and name and what happens is the moment you start reading something when you re when you read a code it should be readable right now if you have these two words there are two ways you can differentiate between two, these two words because in english we use spaces right and spaces are not allowed here so either you can use underscore this is called a snake casing rule uh, so you can use cases with the help of underscore otherwise you can use camel casing rule so you can say user name where the second word first letter is capital okay so it, it makes your code more readable and that's very important okay so in this series we'll not just talk about how to do something we'll also see how do you write clean code what are the best practices and those are those things are important so that's how you create a variable so just to reiterate what is camel casing is whenever you declare variable name and when you have multiple words in one name doesn't matter is it for variable or something which we'll see later you will be converting all the new words first letter with capital case uh, so that's it from this video i hope you enjoyed in the next video we'll see the type of data so if you enjoyed let me in the comment section and hit that like button and do subscribe for further videos Bye bye